The horrors of war and ventriloquist dolls are two of the most dreadful things that a person should never have to go through in their lifetime. Due to the fact that Halloween and Remembrance Day are just 11 days apart, it seems only right that I write this story about two of the most terrible things that a person should never have to go through in their lifetime. There are some of the most limited edition sideshow exhibits and equipment in the United Kingdom that can be found in the private collection of alternative performer Michael Diamond. These items are available for purchase. The person in question has a freak room that is stuffed with a wide range of abnormalities, such as a child with an elephant's head from the Braiding Waxwork Museum, authentic execution swords and axes, handcuffs that belong to Houdini, and shrunken skulls. On the other hand, a display cabinet that has a door that is firmly closed may be discovered hidden in the corner of the room, draped over with a blanket. As of right now, the freak room is the final resting place of Mr. Fritz, a ventriloquist doll that has been looking for a place to call home ever since 1945. Mr. Fritz is located in the freak room of the establishment. The relics of Mr. Fritz are quite few and far between. In addition to being put on a piece of hardwood paste stick, his face was twisted and peeled in a twisted manner. A single head was all that was holding him up. Many people are of the opinion that he is still very much alive, despite the fact that it seems that he has passed away. On the other hand, Michael was not required to pay for Mr. Fritz, in contrast to the remainder of the pieces in his collection, which were acquired via a large financial investment. On the other hand, Michael admits that this was not an unusual occurrence in the beginning of the experiment. A significant number of individuals, especially those who are familiar with ventriloquist dolls, find dolls to be highly terrifying. As a consequence of this, the unlucky ones are either discarded or stashed away in attics for years, while others are handed to collectors whose responsibility it is to gather them. A well-known W.T. military dealer in Liverpool reached out to Michael when they were both working at a festival over the summer. Michael was working at the festival at the time. Michael's travelling display of curiosities led him to the realisation that Mr. Fritz would be an outstanding addition to the collection. He got to this decision after watching the touring show. The trader felt compelled to acquire Mr. Fritz and bring him to the United Kingdom when he discovered that Mr. Fritz had a connection to a German prisoner of war camp. An antiques mall in Myrtle Beach, which is situated in the United States of America, was where Mr. Fritz was discovered on his search. With the arrival of that particular time, everything started to take place. When Mr. Fritz was shown in the dealer's showroom, the dealer, who would rather not be identified, first became aware of anything that would be considered strange. Over the course of time, he has ceased noticing the peculiarity. After closing up for the night, he would return in the morning to discover that the door of Mr. Fritz's display case was wide open, despite the fact that it had been firmly closed. This was the case even though the door had been locked. While it would remain closed during the course of each night, it would reopen in the morning after being closed for the night. Following the occurrence of that event, the situation started to take an even more peculiar turn. Mr. Fritz's eyes were normally closed, although there were instances when he would sometimes have them open. However, the most of the time, his eyes were closed. In addition to this, the position of his mouth would change somewhat. The dealer made an effort to consider obvious alternatives, such as the presence of humidity or a breeze, and even went so far as to believe that a mouse may have tried to make a nest inside of his head. He sought to think of obvious options. Following a more in-depth study, he came to the conclusion that none of these items were the cause of the problem. After all was said and done, he made the decision to tape the door shut since it continued to open, despite his best attempts. When he returned the next day, 
he found that the tape had been removed and the door had been unlocked once again. He was quite surprised by this discovery. In the end, after what seemed like a lifetime, he finally removed Mr. Fritz from the showroom and placed him in the garden shed, where he stayed for the subsequent nine months. His children stated that they heard laughter coming from the shed as they were playing in the backyard, but nobody dared to approach it. This occurred after the event described above. Therefore, it was essential for Mr. Fritz to leave. As soon as Michael obtained control of the single remains of Mr. Fritz, he immediately placed him in the freak room, and from that point on, events started to take place of their own accord. At that moment, the door was starting to open. In the beginning, the door would only open once or twice a week, but with time, it got to the point where it became a routine to open it each and every night without fail. He not only discovered that the display case was open, but he also discovered that it had moved six inches across the table. He was surprised by both of these discoveries. The ravenous curiosity that Michael had been harboring for a long time was eventually satiated when he decided to install a GoPro camera in order to keep an eye on Mr. Fritz. As you would expect, a doll that was created with the intention of entertaining people was not shy around the camera and the video that is being shown here was shot over the course of two nights beginning in September of 2019. A little message written by hand was included with the eerie doll. In the letter, it was revealed that the doll had previously been used as a ventriloquist doll. Over the course of World War II, between the years 1943 and 1945, this doll was used to provide entertainment for Allied prisoners of war who were being held in Stalag the B. In Poland, there existed a concentration camp for German prisoners of war that was known as Stalag the B. In terms of distance, it was situated 2.4 kilometers to the west of the Hammerstein town center. The Nazis established this concentration camp in 1933, making it one of the first concentration camps ever established. Its primary objective was to provide lodging for communists emanating from Germany. With the intention of housing Polish soldiers, the camp was transformed into a prisoner of war camp by the end of September in the year 1939. As a result of being captured during the Tunisian campaign, the first American prisoners of war came in August of 1943. The living circumstances at Stalag the Kubi were deplorable, comprising of long days of laborious work on farms in the surrounding area with very little food availability. The United States of America was responsible for the imprisonment of more than 600 prisoners of war at that location. By educating themselves and putting on performances of a variety of genres of entertainment, including comedies and musicals, the convicts made an effort to overcome these hurdles and be successful. Private Billy Booth, who had worked as a puppeteer and entertainer for children before to the beginning of the war, was one of the hostages who had the energy to entertain other people. He had constructed Mr. Fritz by utilizing German newspapers that had been soaked in potato starch, and he had painted him with a jar of pink gloss that he had stolen from Poland. He had done this in order to make Mr. Fritz. His daughter's cot had been painted with this pot of pink gloss throughout the painting process. Over the period of almost 18 months, Billy Booth and Mr. Fritz kept the prisoners of Stalag the Kubi busy by providing them with songs and jokes that were considered to be in. As a result of the fact that he had such astounding abilities, even a few of the German guards found him to be rather hilarious. On January 14, 1945, two weeks before the camp was finally liberated, Billy and nine other American prisoners of war were led into a field, made to dig a big hole, and then executed for not working hard enough. This horrible event occurred on the day before the camp was finally liberated. Mr. Fritz was transported back to the United States by a fellow prisoner on the 28th of January 1945, 
which was the day that the camp was finally liberated. He was then delivered to Billy Booth's family as a memory of their son's tenacity and his abilities to improve morale, even under the most challenging conditions. Should we fail to remember it? The circumstances behind Mr. Fritz's arrival at an antiques mall in the United States are unclear. May Billy Booth's family have given him away, or might he have been booted out because he was too lively? These things are beyond our ability to comprehend at this time. The only thing that we are aware of is that whatever remains of Billy Booth's invention is safely concealed away in Michael Diamond's freak room, where he will continue to live for an undetermined period of time coming ahead. This is the only thing that we are aware of, and if Billy wants to open Mr. Fritz's cabinet every once in a while to reminisce about years gone by, then Michael is not going to have any problems with that activity at all.